Welcome to the Hank Henny Podcast here on nofilter.net, and you can see the Hank Henny Podcast on nofilter.net, on the Hank Henny Podcast YouTube channel, and you can hear the Hank Henny Podcast on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Bet Online, which is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. You can think you know your stuff. Well, we'll see. Get in on the $200,000 mega contest and pick five games against the spread every week for a chance to win prizes and a share of $200,000. When the game's over, head on over to the online casino, get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind on one of the over 150 slot games. So head to the website today, use the promo code BLEAV and get in on the action bet online where the game starts at betonline.ag. All right, today on the podcast, I want to share with you a conversation I had with one of my students. And this is a this is a typical conversation. And I talked to him about improving and what he needed to do to get better, in particular, what his brother needed to do to get better. Uh, and, and this could apply to golf. This I, When I got done with my conversation, I told him, listen, this was more of a life's message. This is how you get better at anything it is that you want to do. And so many times uh, people will ask me about the mental game and, and mental this and mental that. And what, what do you think uh, we need to do to get mentally better? Like, like I used to get this question on Tiger all the time. I still do. People say like, how was Tiger so good mentally? And I, I always think about that. And I say, you know, he was so good technically when you're that good technically and i'm not saying he didn't have incredible mental you know ability he did great under pressure uh you know the the will to win uh, incredible competitor but when you hit the ball as well as he did when you were that good technically when you're the statistical leader in virtually every single ball striking and short game category, I mean, how could you not be good mentally? I'm not taking anything away from his mental, but but I always think back to the comment Jack Nicholas made when people would ask him, they would say, you know, Jack is golf. And Jack Nicholas, arguably the greatest player ever, you know, Jack Nicholas or Tiger Woods, Jack Nicholas gets the nod because he won 18. Uh, major, so he's considered the greatest of all time. I think I don't think anybody's ever played golf better than Tiger Woods, but Jack Nicholas was absolutely in, in, incredible. And they asked him, they, they said, Jack, do you think golf is 90% mental? Because I hear people talk about this. It's just all mental. It's all mental. It's all mental. And Nicholas said this. He said, you know, yeah, I think that's probably about right. Golf is probably about 90% mental. He said, if your other 10% is 100% correct, meaning if your technical side is 100% correct, then golf is probably 90% mental. And what he really did was he just threw cold water over that. You know, these percentages could be anything. You can have the greatest mental positive thinking, visualization, uh, you know, do this, do that mentally. But if you don't have technical skills, if you don't have good technique, you don't have good fundamentals, you don't have good form, I don't, I don't care what it is you're trying to do, you're not going to be good. And, and then you can also say, hey, you can have a great technique and great fundamentals, but if you're not good mentally, you won't be any good, good either. But I would give the person that has great technique and great fundamentals a better chance to develop a mental game than I would giving somebody who has no technique a chance to develop a mental game. So that's that's my thought there. So I I get these questions a lot. I get them them from parents at 
you know, on, on the hockey arena. Uh, my son, Henry, plays hockey, and I, I've had parents go, Hank, you know, you know what, what do you think the secret is to the, you know, mental game? I feel like my son needs a better mental game. You know, maybe he needs to work with a sports psychologist for this. And I think, you know, and when I analyze, that's not, that's not how I analyze. I break down every single play. You know, I've had times when, when watching hockey and my, my, you know, wife, Suzanne will say, well, Henry didn't have a good game today. He didn't play very good. And I, I think I said, you know, he did a lot of things really. I always look at the positive. He did a lot of things really good. And in fact, he made a few mistakes, but three of those mistakes were the same exact mistake. So he made one mistake three times. If we fix his tech, and that was all technique. He played poor technique on one particular play, but he did the same thing three times. So if we fix that technical problem and he works on that, that he needs a lesson. He needs somebody to teach him how to play better technique in that situation. And if you fix that one problem, then it fixes three mistakes in the game. And all of a sudden your whole your whole attitude about what you just watched would be totally different. You say, oh, you know, that was a, actually a pretty good game. So, so you just, you, it's the same thing in golf. You know, you'll, you, you may play a terrible game of golf, but you may have made the same mistake five times. In other words, maybe you hit, you know, four balls out of bounds and one in the water, and they're all to the right. Okay, it, it, it amounts to a terrible game because you had all those penalty shots, but it was one mistake that you just, that kept repeating itself over and over again. So you got to fix that, that one mistake. So that's how I look at things. How can you, how can you improve one play at a time? How can you improve one shot at a time in golf? So I had this student call me and he, he, he wants to talk about his brother. His brother was going to play in the a state high school tournament, and he had a really bad day. And it's his senior year, and he 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 didn't play good. And I asked him. So I asked I asked him. He said, you know, he blew up. He said he blew up, and mentally he just blew up. Same thing. And he goes, same thing happened to me when I was a senior in high school. And I'm thinking, oh boy. All right. So the same thing happened to you. And he just mentally blew up. I said, what did he shoot? Now, I'm just trying to figure out what did he shoot? That's a simple question. In golf, you should know what you shot. Okay. I don't know what he shot, but he just he played terrible. All right. And, I, and I'm thinking, okay, you fix, you fix your game one play at a time. One shot at a time. Figure out the mistakes you made. And the, the mistakes that cost you or cost your team or whatever it might be. And then you whittle them away one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. I don't know how to fix he played awful. I, I, can't, I can't fix it. I can fix a slice. I can fix a hook. I can fix a top. I can fix a toe. I can fix three putts. I can fix two chips. I can fix a bad sand shot. I don't know how to fix awful. Like I like I like I've never learned how to how to work on awful. Like like what's it like like that's like with a slice. I know okay. I got to get you probably coming more from the inside. I got to get your club face closing, and I got to get the face closed relative to the path of swing. And if I do that, I fix the slice. And if I fix the slice, those penalty shots that went to the right, they'll go away. But awful, I can't fix. Awful, I don't I don't know how to fix. There is no there's no book that's ever been written on how to fix awful. The way you fix awful is you, you fix one shot at a time, one play at a time. And if you fix one, then I guess you're a little less awful. And you fix another one mistake that you made and, they, and you're even less awful. And then you fix another one and maybe you're not, maybe you're not awful anymore. Maybe it's now just bad, okay? And then you fix another mistake you made. 
And then you fix another mistake you made. And now you think, well, you know what? I'm, well, it's kind of an average day. And then you fix another mistake. And then you fix another mistake. And you fix another mistake. Well, it's a little above average day. And you fix another mistake. And you fix another mistake. And you keep fixing those mistakes. And you do that by having proper technique and a proper thought process when you're playing shots or in a situation, if you're in another sport, whatever, whatever it might be. And that's how you, so, so, so I, I try, so what did he shoot? He didn't know what he shot, he, but he just played off. I said, well, I, I said, that's not how you, you attack things. You have to, first thing in golf, you figure out penalty shots, two chips and three putts. How many penalty shots did he have? I don't, I don't know. I don't even know what he shot. He just, he just played so bad. You know, same thing happened to me when I was a senior. I'm like, okay. Uh, how many two chips did he have? How many three putts did he have? We don't know. You have to fix one shot at a time. And that's how you make awful, not so awful. And that's how you make average better than average. And that's how you make better than average really good. And that's how you make really good great. One single shot at a time. You chip away at it. And you figure out what is the way you do it. You figure out what is your worst mistake you're making. What is the mistake that's costing? If I'm watching, if I'm watching hockey, what what is a mistake that someone is making? Like in my son, what mistake is he making that has turned into goals against our team? Is it, and, and, and it's it's a team sport, so it's not one person's mistake. You know, there's a goalie backing up the defenseman. There's forwards that could come and back check better. There's, you know, a def defensive partner that maybe could have done something the same. But, but you got to concern yourself with yourself. What could you do better? And is there a mistake that's being made that turns into a goal against? Because in hockey, you got to stop goals and you got to score goals. Okay. So scoring goals is more about increasing your skill level, giving yourself opportunities, giving yourself opportunities to help your teammates score. And that's how you, that's how you, you end up becoming valuable as an offensive player, but defensively, you got to keep the puck out of your net. So what is it that you need to do to, to fill in the holes that you have that have created goals or scoring opportunities that sometimes could turn into goals. In golf, it, it, it boils down to your biggest mistake, your biggest mistake. And the biggest mistake you can make in golf is, is penalty shots because, you know, it doesn't cost you – when you make a bad shot, it doesn't cost you one shot. And you take a penalty shot, it'll cost you two shots or three shots. I mean, the penalty shots add up, and those are the killers in golf. If you eliminate penalty shots, immediately your score gets better. So what I was getting at with when I was talking to this, this young man is I said, you know what? We figure out what he shot. I don't know what he shot. If he shot 78, then I figure out, okay, what, what's the easiest, what's the low-hanging fruit that could have got us to 77? What's the next piece of low-hanging fruit that we could have picked that could have got us to 76. Maybe it's a chip shot. Maybe it's a three putt. Maybe it's a, a, a bad iron shot. When we miss, did we miss in the right place? There's mistakes you can make. Everybody makes mistakes. And in every sport, people make mistakes. Some mistakes cost you. Some mistakes don't cost you. Try to make mistakes that don't cost you. You're going to make a mistake. But there's usually a conservative way you could play. And there's usually a, a more aggressive way you can play. Every Any sport, same thing. If you play aggressively, do you have the skill level to play aggressively? Or would you better would you be better served just playing a little more conservative? In other words, in golf, playing the ball to the middle of the green. You, you don't have to go to the pin all the time. You know, I mean, and if you go for the pin every time, you're kind of fighting with fire because now you miss and you miss in a place that you can't recover from. And if you can't recover from there, then you hurt your score. Same thing in, in, in every, every single sport. So turn a, turn a 77 into a 76. 
Turn a 76 into a 75. Turn a 75 into a 74. Turn a 74 into a 73. One shot at a time. That's how you analyze things. And that's how you get better. You don't get better by some waving of a wand. There's some miracle thing. If he was just better mentally, uh, you know, and I'm like, what does that mean? What do you, what do you mean if he was better mentally? What, like, like, tell me what that means. You know, is it a, is it a course management mistake? Did he hit the wrong club? Did I, you know, he, 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 he gets two down. I'm so, well, that happens. You gotta, one of the things that, that is the same in every single sport, it doesn't matter what it is. You have to play one shot at a time. And so the, the whole the whole mental game approach really boils down to one shot at a time, one play at a time, one down at a time. It's just one play after another. And you stack good plays on top of good plays on top of good plays, good shots on top of good shots on top of good shots. But you play one shot at a time. You, you can't waste your time looking back and thinking about what could have been or should have been, or I can't believe this happened way back when, or this happened there. You got to you, you got to move on. One of the biggest messages that I give give Henry, my son, is 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 you're going to make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Don't worry. Don't worry if you make a mistake. Just figure out what you did. Try not to make the same mistake again, and then just play on. Play on. You play on. Just keep going. You know. Don't don't worry if you made a mistake. You're not the only guy making a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes in golf. Everybody hits bad shots, and as you get better. Your, your good becomes better. Your good becomes great when you're great. And now a bad shot isn't as bad, but it's still a bad shot compared to what your skill level is. And if your skill level is you're capable of shooting 66 and you hit, don't play to your skill level and you shoot 70, that's a better score than some people can produce because their skill level is nowhere near where, where yours is. So you're always going to have bad shots. You're always going to have misses. You're always, it, it never changes. It never changes. What changes is you get better. And when you get better, your game reaches another level. But that doesn't mean you always play to that level. No, nobody can, can do that. that that's, that's just not the way, the way it works. Everybody's going to make mistakes. Play on. One shot at a time. Play it to the best of your ability. When it's done, you sit and you analyze. Okay, what could I? What what did I do wrong there? What did I do wrong on that particular play? What did I do wrong on that particular shot? Did I do? Did I aim in the wrong place? You know, should I have passed the puck over here instead of over here? What would would have been? What would, what were my options here? I could have hit this shot over here. I could have hit this shot over here. I could have hit this club at this height. I could have hit this club at that height. I, I had all these options. Did I pick the right one? I could have passed it over here. I could have passed it over there. I could have shot it over here. But what did I do? And was it the right was it the right option? And then you try you try to not make that mistake again. If you keep making the same mistake over and over again, then you have to look and say, okay, was it is there something in my technique that just makes it so difficult for me to play this one shot? Or I do I do I not have the shot necessary to play? from this position. And if I don't have the shot necessarily to play from this position, then I'm forced to, to take a harder shot. And it, it's it's most likely the odds are that it doesn't work out as well because it's all percentages. It's just, that, that's what it is. And, and, and if you play the percentages in your favor and you fix your big miss and you improve your skill level, then all of a sudden the mental game becomes a lot easier. And I tried, I tried to explain this in great detail to my students. I said, you, you, you just can't say I played awful. That doesn't do anything. It gives me nothing to go on. I said, sometimes you guys, you guys send me videos. And there are video of, I get videos of people's swings. They send me a video of their swing and they don't send me anything. 
They say, Hank, what, what, can you look at a video of my swing? Okay. What, what do you want? What do you want me to say? What, what, do, you, what do you want me to say? Let me say good swing. Let me say bad swing. What do you want me to say? Like, like, if I say good swing, what does that do? It doesn't. Well, you, you know, if I say bad swing, what does it doesn't do? It. It's no. You gave me no information at all. You got to tell me something. Like this is on this on this swing I just sent you. I hit the ball too low. On this swing I just sent you, I hit the ball too high. On this swing I just sent. You, this was a little curve to the right. This was a curve to the left. This was a curve to this was a curve to the left. I overhooked it, and on this day I tended to overhook a lot of shots. Okay, now I've got something to go on. We've got to fix your hook. You, people just they just send me a swing. Like what am I supposed to do? Just like we're not we're not we're not fixing your swing. We're fixing your ball. We're fixing your game. And your game, it consists of a lot of different plays, a lot of different shots. And there's going to be something you do in common. Like people say, I'll say, where do you miss the ball? Oh, I miss it everywhere. That's not an answer. You either miss it to the right or you miss it to the left. It's only three choices. Either it goes right or left if it doesn't go straight. So, so when you make a particular mistake, analyze that mistake and say, well, you know, someone missed the right, someone missed the left. Okay. Well, what are your worst misses? Okay. Oh, they're all bad. What? what okay. What? <laughs> you missed six shots. Did you miss three to the right and three to the left? If you did, then let's pick one of them. We're going to pick the right first. In golf, I'm going to fix the right miss first. Fix the right miss, then fix the left. Let's get rid of the three right misses. And then all of a sudden, you've only got three misses instead of six, and you're only missing in one direction. Now you're more consistent. You're inherently more consistent because you've missed three to the right and three to the left. If I fix the ones to the right, and I get rid of that, I can't fix them all. I can't fix awful. I can fix shots to the right or shots to the left. I'll fix the three shots to the right. Fix the three shots to the right. We're only left with the shots to the left. And now all of a sudden, you're only playing half the golf course. You don't have to worry about 50% of the course because you know you're not going to miss it to the right. You're only going to miss it to the left. And now you can always, you know what you can do? You can always aim more to the right. You can aim more to the right and play away from your left miss. But if you're hitting right and hitting left, you got nowhere to aim. You know, you just got to flip a coin, which I don't know which one's coming, right or left. So you have to fix one or the other. And it's the same way no matter what you're, you're trying to fix. Fix your critical mistakes. Whatever you're doing, I don't care what it is. Fix your critical, fix your critical issues in business. Fix your critical issues in, in your golf game. Fix your critical issues in, in whatever sport you're playing. Fix the ones that are costing you the most. And then you're going to automatically become more consistent and because because now you've cut the playing field down and now you don't have to worry about so many things and then play one shot at a time one single shot at a time forget about your bad shots play on play on you don't have time to think about all your bad shots you don't have time to think about you know what you're going to shoot or or what you shot last week or what the you know coach is going to think or what you don't have time for that you got to focus in on what you're doing. And, you know, one of my things I talk about in, in putting is you have to hit the putt the right speed. Focus in on the speed. So I, so I talked to my student. And he said, you know, I, I had two three putts yesterday. Okay. Um, of the two three putts you had, how long was the second putt? Uh, two feet. I'm like, okay. Well, we need to we need to work on our short putts. There was one instance where I said, you know, how long was your two putt? He said, I two putted from six. I three putted from six feet. I said, how long was your three putt? He said, I three putted from six feet. I said, you three putted from six feet from two steps away. You couldn't get it in in two shots. Oh, I hit the first one too hard. Okay, hit the cup, spun out. I hear about all this stuff. You know, and I'm like. What are you supposed to think about when you're putting? 
You're supposed to think about the speed that you hit the putt. That's your focus. Hit the putt the right speed. Hit the putt the right speed. You have to remind yourself. You have to talk to yourself. When, when, when I'm watching coaches coach, I watch these hockey coaches coach, and it drives me nuts. It drives me batty. I'm watching these guys, and they're just standing there. They're never saying anything. When I'm coaching, when I'm coaching, if it's an hour lesson, I'm probably talking for 55 minutes. I'm, I, I, I had a lesson today, and I, I, one of the instructors at the place I teach was watching, and I said, you're, you're observing why my students do better, because I work harder. I'm constantly, constantly, constantly delivering a message or reinforcing the message that I've been giving or encouraging my student or giving them feedback. I watch these coaches, they just stand there. And I'm like, and I got one, I got one coach telling me my, my son doesn't bend his knees enough. Well, what do you want me to do? Like, I'm a golf pro. I'm not I'm like, he doesn't he needs to bend his knees more. He just, he won't bend his knees enough, you know, when he's skating. I'm like, that seems pretty simple to fix. Bend your knees. Like if I was coaching, let me tell you something. His knees would be bent. I'm not a coach. I'm not a hockey coach. I'm not out there on the ice with him. But if I was, you know what I would be doing? I'd be reminding him time after time after time. Henry, bend your knees. Henry, bend your knees. Good going there, bud. You're bending your knees better. Way to go. Henry, bend your knees. Every, I'd be right on him all the time, on the time, all the time. I wouldn't be standing over there saying nothing. Like I watch these coaches, they, they, might, they might talk for, for five minutes, maybe, maybe in an hour of practice, five minutes, nothing. There's nothing, no encouragement, no nothing. I'm like, set up a drill, have them do the drill. <laughs> I mean, that's not coaching. You got you to gotta give people feedback, but you're, you, you as the individual have to talk to yourself. You have to tell yourself something that I might, you know, like I tell people, I said, you know, I'll think you're getting this. I'll think you're getting this when you say something I might have said sometime. That's like a, a joke. I said, like, like, I'll think you're really getting this when you say something I might have said. So far, you said four things and none of which I've ever said which doesn't make me think you're thinking about what I'm telling you to do. Concentrate. This is one of the things that's not, that's not brought up enough. Like I had a student today, I said, think about what you're doing. Focus on what you think. Think. Think about what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. Stay focused. Concentrate. You've got to get your takeaway right. How do you get your takeaway right? You know how you get it right? You think about what you're doing. When you're out there doing whatever it is you're trying to do, think about what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. Focus on what you're doing. Played pickleball the other day with my wife, Suzanne. We're playing pickleball. And before we played, we played in a little game. Before we played, we were working on some cut shots. I'm helping her with some cut shots. Not a shot that's easy for her. It's not a shot she's ever played. It's a really good player, but she needs to get it. But she needs to develop a cut shot. You have to. You have to have all the shots, just like in golf. You have to have nine shots. Pick a ball. You got to have a cut shot. Top spin shot and drop shot. Cut shot. Top spin shot. Helped her. She's doing great. Focusing, thinking about what she's doing. But I'm encouraging her. Come on, you can do it. Keep doing it. Better, better. Way to go. Good job. Then we went in a game. And we went in a game. Not one time did she try, try a cut shot. Not one time. Not one time. Didn't even didn't even try. I'm like, what was that? Wait, wait, you, you didn't even you didn't even attempt it one time. You have to think about what you're doing. When I coach college golf and I would have students guys on our team and they'd be out there and I said, guys, you're going to hit bad shots, but think about what you're doing. Don't just hit and get it over with. Think about what you're doing. That's my, that's, a, I mean, that is the most simple advice you can do. You want to know about the mental game? Play one shot at a time. Think about what you're doing. 
And if you don't know what to think about, take a lesson. Watch some of my videos. They'll give you something to think about. And I would suggest if you want something to think about, think about something I might have said. Because if you think about something I might have said, you got a good chance of getting better. All right. That's my advice for improving today. Hope everybody enjoyed the podcast. Uh, if you have arthritis pain, let me give you some more advice or muscle soreness, joint pain, try my Voodoo Pain Relief Cream. You go to voodoopainrelief.com and you can uh, order it up. It is 100% guaranteed. Nobody ever returns it because it works so great. People have ordered it over and over and over again for years. It is a fantastic product. So go there and check it out, voodoopainrelief.com. If you are interested in golf lessons and you want to get your golf game better, I am teaching at the golf practice in Highland Park, Illinois, and you can go to HaneyUniversity.com and you can find out all the information you need right there. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Enjoy all the programming on NoFilter.net. You can hear the podcast on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. And also you can see the podcast on the Hank Haney Podcast YouTube channel. So go there and check it out. Hope everybody has a great day and we will talk to you soon on the Hank Haney Podcast. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>